I'm Mark Bickley. And as the team embarks on what we hope will be a more successful back half of the season, welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Hungry Jack's Chicken Fries. Ebony Marinoff will be along shortly with the other half of the club's Irish connection, defender Mark Keane. But first, after his long-awaited recovery from serious injury, Nick Murray is determined to recapture the form which saw him become Adelaide's number one key defender. Nick ruptured his ACL towards the end of last season, but says rehabilitation has helped him become a better athlete with greater strength. His return through the sandful also allowed him to play alongside his brother, Toby. Yeah, it felt really good. Obviously, it's been a long 10 months, but to be able to get back out there, obviously, I had two games in the sample, so I got a bit of exposure to footy there. And then, you know, you find out a lot about yourself. Obviously, early days, you're pretty restricted as to what you can do, and then you build up um, pretty aggressively throughout the, you know, your months four to six, um, and then you're feeling really good at that stage. And I was probably looking to play around that eight months, but the surgeon sort of said, mate, we just need to give you a bit of time, um, sort of wait for that that 10 months and then, um, yeah, but it's all worked out really well. Down the line and that is a courageous mark. Welcome back, Nick Murray. With Mark Murray, gives it to Adams. The Swans backtrack to go forward through Blakey. Murray, though, after Wicks lost his footing, was able to intercept. Well done by Murray, getting a hand to it, going early. Being back out there on the AFL field, it was, uh, yeah, very pleasing. And Toby, you've been watching his ACL rehabilitation, now you've found yourself on the list. How awesome is it to be a Crow? Yeah, pretty great. Um, obviously, not many people get to play alongside their brother, so for it to happen um, this year is pretty special. And then for him to come back today and went about it the way he did is very special. Yeah, he did all the right things and extra, so um, yeah, I was very, very pleased to see the way he went about it, and obviously, it's paid off. I can't thank the high performance staff enough, especially you know Tim Parham, um, Josh Emanuel and Jared Wallace. They, they really helped me and they were really um, enthusiastic with the rehab because there was some down days there, but they really um, you know, took me through. Murray's been impressive. Highly rated player at that Lake Crows. Are real positive tonight to get him back. He'll look a lot more stable down back with him in the team. Gym coach Josh Manuel, he's the guy that looks after me. Um, Bit of a crazy uni, he loves, loves heavy weights and uh, he had me in there yeah, lifting pretty heavy and quite frequently. Yeah, went for a PV and was able to get out 162, so that was pleasing. Not sure if I'll ever hit it again because I was probably, you know, a couple of kilos heavier than what I'd like to be when I'm playing. Um, but yeah, it was good to tick that off. From all reports, it's the biggest ever done at the club. Um, so yeah, happy to, to have that mantle. No, it was good. I was in there with uh, my fellow defenders and they got around me, so it was uh, a good moment. Something that um, I sort of wrote down as after I'd done my injury, I wanted to hit a 160 bench press before I returned to play, so be able to hit 162. Um, yeah, that's just one of the things I've ticked off. Murray launches long from about 55. I had a pretty unique situation when I come in. I uh, come in in January and then was playing some AFL footy pretty early on, so I didn't have, you know, the two years that most blokes would have, you know, um, putting on weight and to be able to have that 10 months, uh, you know, to really work on what I need to work on, get my groins right um, and get a few other things right. It's, uh, yeah, really looking forward to sort of seeing what I can bring this second half of the year. And here's some exciting news for Crows fans. Riley Philthorpe is very close to returning from his knee injury. Just good to be back with the boys and um, yeah, have a bit of a kick and feel a bit of body again. That's been a while since I've done that, so really bought into the gym, the gym staff, and really got after it and you know tried to yeah give it my best, I guess. And I was gymming up body about four or five times a week, so it was pretty solid for a bit there, but it was uh, it's paid off, I hope. Yeah, I put on about four kilos, which has been pretty cool. We've had some highs and lows, so it's been pretty tough to watch and I haven't really been able to help out too much, which has been challenging. But yeah, just get around the boys whenever I can and um, try to make my presence felt a bit in the gym and off the field where I can and yeah help out wherever I can. I've learned a lot. I've had a lot of time to reflect obviously. Um, done a lot of reflecting about the player I want to be and you know teammate I want to be so I'm really excited to get back and hopefully imp implement a bit of that. I decided early on that I'd try and grow because I've never grown one but yeah I'll keep it for one AFL game I reckon and then it'll be gone so end of the rehab. Yeah I just can't wait to be back out at the boys and run around and see a packed Adelaide Oval and hopefully kick a few goals would be nice. Stay with us. Still to come on The Crows Show, we'll meet Jess Waterhouse, who, after switching from soccer to AFLW, has become a cult figure. Giants 
went up and that was potentially dangerous because it was Crows with the numbers at ground level. It's still in. in. Eddie filled the ball. Escaped. Eddie Betts. No. Eddie no. Betts. Eddie Betts somehow kept yeah. it in. I reckon he did. Oh, yeah. 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 It's a fantastic week, uh, the celebration of Indigenous culture. I'm just glad we got the win, to be honest. It was in Indigenous round last year that you kicked goal of the year and you might have got another contender tonight. Can you talk us through that one? You almost lost your shorts, almost went out of bounds and still managed to uh, to find a way. Hi, Billy. Uh, yeah, well, I thought I was going out of bounds and I just jumped on it and I slid and no one came at me, so I thought I would try to weave my way through and then almost got tackled and then just put it on the boot. I didn't even look out the goals, I put it on the boot. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, it went through. Um, so yeah, I'm happy it went through. If it didn't, didn't. So there we go. Harry Schomburg will use this season's remaining games to consolidate his place in the senior side. At the end of last year, Harry put together a string of consistent performances, but ruptured his Achilles in the final game. As he strives to recapture top form, Harry should look to players like Jake Saligo, who have taken big strides in 2024. Can Schomburg deliver? That looks brilliant. Exactly what the Crows needed and Harry Schomburg loves it. It's just been so exciting, obviously um, having a bit of time away from footy with a rehab. Um, yeah, it's just been so good to sort of go out and, and sort of do what I love doing. So um, obviously played uh, four games in the sample just to find my feet, get back playing some good footy and then obviously been playing in the AFL, which has been so good. So no, absolutely loving it. And um, yeah, it's been going good so far. Sean Berg tries to lift muscles his way through. God be amazing bounce. Sometimes you need a little luck, sometimes you need a lot. It was a sharp right turn. When you can't play footy is um, realising how much you actually miss playing footy and, and being healthy and being able to run around. So it can be pretty lonely and um, obviously a long journey as well, but you just got to find the positives and, and keep sticking at it. So um, lucky enough for me, I had one of my good mates, Nick Murray, in rehab at the same time. So we'll be able to, we were able to sort of connect and, and do everything together. So um, yeah, no, it was really good and um, yeah, enjoyed the time. Now they apply some more pressure, Schomburg. I'm with McCartan. Schomburg. Hand pass knocked down by Dawson. Sparing kick Jones. Working on my body shape, my fitness, yeah, and sort of my running style as well. So those were the sort of three main things that I sort of worked on. Um, obviously sort of come back, put on some muscle. I think I put on about three kilos of pure muscle, which was good, and obviously worked on my fitness side as well. So it's definitely made me a better athlete, and I'm noticing that um, in my games today. And don't forget, after the Crows-Giants game tonight, you can get the inside word on Crows Live. Interviews and news from the rooms and we'll answer your questions about the game. Crows Live is streamed live on our website and also available the next day on our YouTube channel. Hey guys, Riley O'Brien here. This year we're running a trick shot competition, so we'd love you to send in all your trick shots at home, at a footy oval, down the park. Show us what you got. To give you guys some inspiration, I'll get as tricky as I can get and I'll handball over my head into the tray. Make sure you send in all your trick shots. Details are on the screen now. And here's some of our latest entries. This month's winner will be notified shortly. When Jess Waterhouse embarked on a sporting career, soccer was the first choice. Captain of the young Matildas at 15, Jess went on to play three seasons with Adelaide United before taking up football. Since joining the Crows two years ago, Jess has earned a reputation as an explosive speedster with goal smarts. And if you follow TikTok, you'll know Jess is a star with a legion of followers. Day two, pre-season camp. Let's do it. We're at a footy oval in Cairns this morning. We're going to do a training session. We're straight back into it. Week one, we had our pre-season camp, which was really nice to get away, kind of connect as the group. So it's put us in a position where we've been able to come back and, you know, start strong rather than trying to play that catch-up game. How was the sesh? Woo! 
she's a good one. Yes, I'm very much into TikTok. I like making the videos. I didn't really think too much of it when I started. I was kind of documenting my journey, like, away from football and navigating that. And I thought that there was a bit of, like, a gap there, I guess, for the women in sport. So just trying to represent, like, our sport and everything online. And then, yeah, my following kind of has taken off a bit and I'm getting more questions about what we do and what I get up to and yeah just having a bit of fun with it I really enjoy making content Those it's just not her. cool that you copy me I can't return those I like training so I just continue to train I'm really focused on like structure and I like having goals to kind of work towards so yeah I had a pretty big off season I like keeping that routine in place so yeah still going to the gym still doing a lot of running in the off season especially found a love for long distance running um, which was really cool and then yeah, after I completed my marathon. I mean, if you told me like 12 months ago, uh, I would have been running a marathon in my off season, I would have laughed at you, but yeah, just really, really hard, really tough, but you got to go to those places to be able to find the reward after. And yeah, just so proud of myself to be able to complete it and to say that I've ran a marathon, which is very cool. Over the head of Waterhouse. Can she turn? She can. Obviously marathon running is not really transferable to footy, but it has definitely um, helped me build my aerobic capacity and my aerobic base. So obviously my goal is to play as many games as possible and put my best foot forward and make sure I'm performing for the team week in, week out, whether that be scoring goals or assisting our key forwards. But um, yeah, that'll come as, as long as I'm putting in the effort every training and making sure I'm getting better every day. Crows are through to another preliminary final. Adelaide in Sydney's fairy tale run. Waterhouse finishes it in style. Thanks for joining me, Keeney. No worries. What's life in Adelaide like? Yeah, no, absolutely loving life in, uh, in Adelaide. It's good to have um, my partner Quivo over as well, so. Um, that was certainly nice in how to move in with Carolyn, his partner as well, so it's good to have a few more Irish over here. Yeah, does it feel like Carl coming over from Ireland, you've got a little bit of home with you? Yeah, no, def it's definitely good to have him over, um, so especially with Tyler Brown going back to Melbourne this year, um, it was good to have Carol coming in instead. Can you talk about, I guess, finding it difficult um, in 2019, 2020, what made you come back to the game? Um, yeah, when I went back home, I was back home for 18 months and got to play hurling and Gaelic football and it's kind of always a dream I always wanted to just play Gaelic football and hurling so I got a bit of a, a dosage of that into, into me and um, then I just said oh I just wanted to get back playing professional sport and <laughs> get paid to play. <laughs> always helps. And you talk about that transition, what's it like Gaelic to AFL? Yeah, it definitely took me ages at the start, like a attack and lock here and match your body over at Collingwood trying to teach me how to kick and they've, they've uh, they spent hours and hours try, trying to teach me how to kick and even mark the footy but I'm uh, no, grateful for them to put a lot of hours into me. And when you talk about that transition, what do you think your strengths are from Gaelic to AFL? Um, I suppose just being unpredictable <laughs> at times, like um, even the Aussies kind of say it, they don't know, like any time I get the footy, they don't know what I'm going to do with it or um, it's just being unpredictable and unpredictable to your teammate or to your opposition that um, they don't know what you're going to do and just play off instinct because there's no marks or anything in Gaelic football so you just kind of just play on and do whatever you see. <laughs> <laughs> and what are your strengths that you bring to the team do you think? Oh, I just think aerial and, and just being a big pillar down, down a key defender and using, using my kicking ability as well. I think you got a little bit of white line fever, does that from, come from Gaelic? Oh, or yeah, the I'm Irish? Not, I'm not too sure where that comes <laughs> from, but um, probably comes from the Irish and uh, I'm sure every Irish player has a bit of white line fever as well. Just, just the competitive in, in us. Talk about your off days, do you do anything other than football? Um, I used to work at O'Neill's, um, I do a bit of coaching out in Chunga, but um, I'd love to study, but being, interna being an international and with my visa, I, I can't do any studies, so um, yeah, just trying to keep myself occupied in, on them days. You touched on Ichanga, what, what's your role up there? Uh, so me and Josh, uh, Rochelle do a bit of uh, coaching with the under-14s. Whenever we can on a Tuesday or Thursday night, we, we can, we'll, uh, we'll head out and do a bit of a coaching session with them. Is coaching something that...? Uh, yeah, something back home, like I'll obviously move back home whenever that is, but uh, something with Gaelic football or, or hurling that I'll um, go into when I'm older. Awesome, thanks yeah, for joining cheers. me. Thanks for joining Thank you.
Thanks to Bendigo Bank, let's dive into some community footy. And Glenunga has made a great start to its season in Division 1 of the Adelaide Footy League. The Rams, coached by former North Melbourne defender and Sturt coach Nathan Grimer, have won their first 10 matches and sit two games clear on top of the ladder. Their latest win was against the Brighton Bombers. So tonight, the Crows take on the Giants at Adelaide Oval. Here's a couple of things to keep an eye on. Firstly, like all Adelaide fans, I'm really keen to see how the players respond after having a short break. After having a week off both mentally and physically, the Crows have been quick to point out they want to put a full stop behind the front half of the year and focus on the second half. Tonight will be a good indication of what we can expect looking forward. Tom Green is one of the best ball winners in the competition and what he does really well is get the ball to the outside where players like Josh Kelly can run and use their skills. This combination of Green and Kelly and the balance between inside and outside has really troubled Adelaide the last few times they've met. For Adelaide, this game is all about pressure. If the Giants midfielders can get the ball to Jesse Hogan and Toby Green easily, it's going to be a very difficult day for the Adelaide defenders. I would tag Lockie Whitfield. He's their main architect with his ball movement from half back. This looks like a great role for Ben Keyes and gives him the chance to have a strong impact on the game. I think the Giants are gettable and that Adelaide can win. Here are Matthew Nix's thoughts on the game. But we got a week to freshen up, so both mentally and physically, and sort of reset ourselves for the for the back half of the year. And you know, key now for us is really looking to finish strong. Um, you know, have that momentum going into the latter part of the season and, and get back to our best footy. I mean, they're a very good side, and if you don't bring the contest, they they've got uh, the execution, the skill the talent on the field to really punish you and they've done that to us unfortunately the last two or three times we've played here at AO so sometimes it's a nice way to come into a game knowing that you know a team's done that to you and and our guys will come out with that edge that we talked about last week we know we've got to bring and and then the challenge for us is to be able to do it for four quarters I think we're the youngest team in the competition the last few weeks so we we are playing the kids and we will play the guys we think deserve to come into the team and are going to make us better. We're, we're going to bring a guy in for a debut. We want to make sure he's ready to play the game of footy. We're not just bringing him in you know, to play a young kid. That's not going to make the player better. That's not going to help the team get better. Um, it's not going to improve our results. And we're looking both short term, long term, medium term. We're, you know, we make decisions for a reason. Oh, no, I, I love our state. I love, I love how passionate we are about footy. Uh, I grew up here, so I'm a little biased. Um, but I spent enough time away to see it from afar. It's something that I think, um, I think it's respected by other states, the fact that we're so passionate about our footy. And at the moment, the reason why there's so much frustration out there is because of that passion. And that we don't want to lose that. Um, you know, we love that our supporters come out here and they want to watch us perform. And when we're not, I mean, the last thing we want is for them to walk away, oh, well, pleased that we're not getting results. Um, it just makes us dig in deeper and we want to perform for them so they get reward as well. Whenever you take a photo of yourself or a friend at any of our games and post it to social media, make sure you use the hashtag WeFlyersOne. Let's settle on you. Please email faceinthecrowd at afc.com.au with photo ID to claim your prize of two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill at Adelaide Oval. That just about wraps up today's show. Thanks for your company and I look forward to joining you again at 3 o'clock next Sunday on 7 before we take on Brisbane at the Gabba. Stand by now for the Sandville clash between the Crows and Glenelg. The Crows Show, brought to you by Hungry Jack's Chicken Fries.